it attacks two different stages of the peaches. It, it'll attack the, the spring twigs as they're, as they're starting to uh, have their leaf flush. They'll go in, they'll bore into the twigs and cause damage to the tree itself. And then later in the summer, they bore into the peaches. So uh, a large infestation of OFM will completely destroy a, the commercial viability of peach growing. And right about that time, Macrocentris, which is a parasitic wasp, so it is a wasp, but it's a very small parasitic wasp, and it only attacks insects. They don't have a real stinger. It's an ovipositing tube. And so it's not strong enough to penetrate human skin. They're not interested in humans. They're, they're really focused in on their host, which is the oriental fruit moth. Parasitic wasp was discovered to be effective against them. And because of that, um, the Palisade Insectary was established in 1945-46, and it was established as essentially an industrial rearing facility to produce enough macrocentrous wasps to keep oriental fruit moth down in the 15 to 2,000 acres of peaches that are grown in the valley. So any of the biological control agents that we introduce, number one, they're host specific, and number two, we found that out through a, a decade worth of testing, uh, searching for other organisms that it may attack. Um, they do this in laboratories and in field settings. Insects have a very short life cycle. So in that way, they're able to do several generations in a short period of time. That allows evolution to work on them very rapidly. So they've evolved very fast to specialize on parasitizing certain insects. So they're pre-programmed. Insects do not have a large brain. They just work off of instinct. If there's no oriental fruit moth for them to attack, they will fly and fly and fly until their wings fall off, just searching for that cue. We're a, we're a rare institution. Um, there's an, there's a, an insectary in Idaho, and there are a couple back east. But ours is, um, not to brag too much, but it is the, the biggest and the best facility for this type of work in the nation. Our goal is to produce 1 to 1.5 million wasps per season. So the Mac wasp cannot overwinter here in the valley. So our job at the insectary is to raise the Mac wasp in a colony over the winter time. Uh, the way that we do that is on an alternate host, which is the potato tuber moth larvae. They attack those in our facility uh, that are burrowing into potatoes. What we do is we have potatoes shipped in, we have a board covered in nails, we puncture the potato with several spikes. It leaves hundreds of small holes in the potato that allow easy access for the potato tuber moth larvae to enter the potato. Those potato tuber moth larvae develop in the potatoes. As that's happening, the wasps that we've reared previously are ovipositing in those potatoes, parasitizing the larvae that are in there. When the potatoes are full of the potato tuber moth larvae, we stack them up on a rack. Inside the stacks of potatoes are the potato tuber moth larvae feeding. Some of them have been parasitized and some of them haven't. When they're done feeding in there, they drop down the stacks of potatoes and into the beds of sand in order to form their cocoons. We take those beds of sand, we crumble them up, and then we give them a, a special bath. Uh, that bath uh, causes the sand and the silk from the cocoons to basically melt away and leave just the pupil casings with the insect in them. The, the parasitized ones 
The pupil casings are relatively empty. Well, they'll float to the top of the bath. Those that are healthy are still very dense and they'll sink to the bottom. So all we have to do is use a scoop and we get the parasitized ones separated off the top of the bath, put them in little paper bags. We have some material in them so that when the wasps emerge as adults, they have something to crawl up onto. When they emerge, their exoskeletons have to solidify and dry up a bit and their wings get ready and, and then they can crawl off of that and fly away.